Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Silver Dragon here, coming at you with some From the Depths. Going to be remaking my weapons tutorial for the game. Now that I have a uh, better knowledge of certain weapon systems, I figured it'd be a good idea to redo this before the dev uh, makes use of it, if he so desires. Uh, so anyway, let me go into single player here. I'm going to head over to the vehicle designer, which allows us to test out a bunch of designs and all the... Uh, Various creativities we can do with that. Do all the mess with all the systems. Okay, let me hop into the air here. So this is my little robo dude. I can actually hit tab and kind of go outside and you can take a look at him. It's kind of awesome. Anyway, let's tab back in here so I can control my beast. Hit space to hop up into the air and I want to... No, it's not really hopping up into the air as much as I wanted it to. Okay, I'm going to hit escape and load in a vehicle. My weapons testing platform gonna load that baby right in and pop on up here there we go so this is just a qu quick little platform I created with an engine and some uh, some base wooden targets to kind of show off some of the weapons so in order to actually build the weapons you need to go into the build menu and be on you know some kind of ship like this or even a small platform like the one that's currently floating above my target up there cough so Build, get in the build menu, E to go into the uh, actual tool menu to grab whatever you need. And we're going to start with simple weapons and the ram. So the ram is, as one would imagine, it's just a simple little little spike, essentially, you want to attach to the front of any ship that you're going to ram into another ship. Very simple. Works fairly well. I don't really use it too often, though. I find, uh, I find some other weapons to be a little bit better than, you know, well, more efficient at tearing things apart than a ram. So, after that, we have the small cannon. Just a tiny little cannon here. Now, on the left side, you actually have your selection window. Now, you can use your mouse wheel to scroll between those and then use control. Once it kind of balances out here. Oh, no. It's not oh, it's I forgot to get some ammo barrels. That's my problem. Whoops. I can't believe I messed it up. So, resources, ammo barrels. Let me get a bunch of those. Okay, now I can fire. So, you can either aim and use control which will cause it to fire, or middle mouse button. I usually prefer to use control just because middle mouse button you're going to end up, you know, switching when you don't mean to. Now, if you want to change the slot that this is used on, it will always work on all. That's just the way it works for that. You can switch it to like 1, 3, 2, whatever you want it, and then select it from that. Let me actually switch to 3 and then swap one over there. So you can actually set various weapon systems to work on specific keys. That way you're only firing those systems when you select that key. Now you can see this small cannon is not very effective. It's cheap. You could probably build it in large numbers, but it's not that great. Next in the simple weapons, we have the large cannon. This is one I like to start out with quite often for some of my basic rides. For some of my basic uh, combat ships. It's a pretty nice little cannon. It's got a much bigger shell, as you can see. And it's dealing a little bit more damage to this uh, wooden beam hull. If it was uh, single section wood, it would be tearing it apart right now. But that is the uh, little basic, uh, basic cannons that we have here for that. For the small and large cannons. After which, we have the auto cannon. Now, this one is actually a fixed cannon. So you can't really move it or, you know, shift it around. Uh, you can do so if you attach it to a, uh, to a turret base. But for now, it's just going to be sitting right here. And I'll actually show you a turret base in a moment and when I uh, build custom guns. So I'm just going to fire it as is. This one is actually a bit of a machine gun. So, yeah, it's good for taking on some air units if you happen to encounter any. It fires multiple rounds at a fairly quick pace. If I hold it down there, it'll... You can kind of see the rate of fire, and it's, it's dealing a little bit of damage to that wood there. <laughs> Pardon me. Ah. Good thing I have a tissue box nearby. Anyway, so if you wanted to get this so that you could actually move it around, let me go into build menu, E. Down in the constructibles tab, we have the turrets. There's all different kinds of turrets, and I'll cover these in more detail down the road. And again... Steam, you're always in my damn way. And I could have sworn I turned you off beforehand, but it never seems to do it. Bloody hell. So, anyway, I digress. Constructibles, turret. 360 degree precision turret. So, when I place it a turret, I can go into civil weapons and this autocannon and place it down. And now, I can scroll with the precision turret just left and right. Not up and down, but I can at least scroll left and right. 
and then can fire it. So I could have attached this to just a simple 360 turret and it would just kind of curve every which way, up, down, left, right, all over the place. But it's also a little bit unstable and can be, you know, difficult to aim at times. Now, moving on from that, our next weapon up. Let's just, actually let me get through the harpoon gun here and kind of skip it. Now the harpoon gun is what one would imagine. It launches a little bit of a harpoon. Let me actually see if I can harpoon that raft up there. Nope, missed it. So the harpoon, it was just something that shoots out, it latch onto a vehicle, and will tether you to the enemy vehicle. So you can use that to kind of pull an enemy vehicle in towards you, if you wanted to, and uh, use some kind of shredding machine to take them down. Let me get rid of that. Now, other than that, we have the torpedo launcher, which, as you can imagine, is just a basic torpedo launcher. You can make uh, custom ones of these later if you so desire. I can use middle mouse button to fire that, and it will just fire off this torpedo. It won't actually do anything to this vehicle. I need a separate vehicle for it to actually hit and do any damage. So this is a simple, again, forward-facing fixed weapon that you can alter if you wanted to. You can put this on a turret if you so desire, but you can actually make custom torpedoes and missiles down the road as well, which I'll be showing off here in a bit. So let me go ahead and remove that. But it's, it's a good basic thing to take out any enemy's uh, hulls. You can see it's kind of pushing against the ride right there. Okay, out of the net, the next one we have is the Seeker Missile Launcher. Now for this, I'm going to need another target because otherwise it will not lock on properly. So, let me go build for a second here. Load constructible, new vehicle. I'll build it over here. Alright. Just give me something I can lock on to here. All my alarms are going off. <laughs> Okay, that should be fine. So, now I have a platform out there I can lock onto. So any enemies that you can that you're going to target other than your own ship, of course, you'll be able to lock onto and fire this missile. It's a small little seeking missile that will attempt to lock once you fire it, it will lock on to the target and try and seek out its own. As you can see right there, it had a little beam on the end. So this is really good for taking out any air targets. It can help in uh, certain cases to uh, eliminate some of their parts. It's hitting, it looks like it's hitting the back wall before it can actually hit the target. But that is the basics of the Seeker Missile Launcher. You just kind of aim, get the target in your sights, and then fire and let it do its thing. I usually like to put a bunch of those into a sequence in order to uh, get things done. Now I should mention when you're building something, if, if you're aiming at it, like if I aim at the back wall there, and hit B, it'll start building there. If I hit B right here, it'll start building here. If I hit B up in space, it'll start building last... Well, actually, it's kind of weird. I believe that's the center position of the ship, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, that is the Seeker Missile Launcher, so let's move on from that. Now, we have two more bits. I'll get onto the drill in a moment. We have the laser. Now, this is another fixed weapon. It's a, a simple, just fixed laser. You just press the fire button. It will charge, and then it will open fire. It's not really doing too much right now. Oh, you can see it is tearing right through the wood and even the metal in the back. If I wasn't repairing it, it would uh, probably take it out. And again, you can attach this to a turret if you wanted to. Or you can even make your own custom lasers, which I will get to later here. But that is the, uh, that is the just basic laser weapon. Now comes to one of my favorite weapons now. This used to be a weapon I had no idea how it worked, you know, I didn't really understand it all that pro all that well, and now it is by, by far one of my favorite weapons. So, you start off with the, uh, this is the drill. Uh, it starts off with the actual drill piece here, which is the center of the device. And then you would add on extensions and drill bits from that. So I'm going to add on a couple extensions. You could add on uh, horizontal splitters, which you could add on you know, other extensions. Let me add a couple extensions on these guys here. And then some more horizontal splitters. And then you can add on either small drill bits to the ends of those. Or maybe a large drill bit, which is this big guy right here. Actually, let me add another extension to that. Kind of bring it out a bit and add on the large drill bit. Okay, now I could turn this on and it would work just as is, so I just go over to it and hit Q. 
Actually, no, it doesn't look like it will work without at least one of each. So the next things you can add in are the power input and the torque amplifier. The power input increases the rate at which the drill accelerates. Good for returning it to its maximum speed while drilling so that, yeah, you know, once you're drilling into something, it will quickly speed back up and continue its power. And then we have the torque amplifier. This increases the uh, armor piercing of the uh, drills itself. Now, you can either attach it like one to the other like this, and it'll stay connected, and you see it's starting up now, and it'll slowly speed up, and then, you know, just ram it into something, and it'll do some massive damage. But, let's make something really nice for this. So what I typically do is I hit, you know, hit Q on this again to shut it down. And just remember, of course, you have to select this and then hit Q to... And you can do it in this mode as well to turn it on or turn it off. There we go. Turn it on. Of course, without the torque amplifier, it can't do a damn thing. So typically what I like to do is, you know, spread it out a little bit if you can. Take power on each side. Oops, didn't mean to do that. I can also hit N if I wanted to, to duplicate this. Of course, I already have it there. And then I take the torque amplifiers, and I slap them in the middle, underneath, on top, pretty much everywhere where you can access the, or where you can access it that it would belong on top of the power, essentially. So you want to attach the power. And you can see this thing is just whipping now. Look at that. Look how fast that thing is going now. I could also add, if I wanted to, some large drills onto the side here. As you can see, they're just kind of going insane. And these will just, you ram a ship with this on the front, and it's just going to tear into it and absolutely decimate it. Which I rather like, to say the least. <laughs> to say the least, this is probably one of the more effective weapon systems that I've used again in the beginning. This is like the first thing I like to start off with from now on is this drill system just because it works so well. Alright, let me go into build mode here. Mirror mode. So with mirror mode, if you're ever building anything, just select it dead center of wherever you're trying to build. And you'll be able to remove whatever double build on both sides. Alright, let's hit B to get rid of that for a second. Now, that's the drill, and with that, every single of the simple weapons has been covered. Now, next we have the custom missiles. I will guess I will go in order now, since I actually have a much better idea of how these missiles actually function really well. Now, you can just place these missiles wherever you want. I like to personally build a turret for them, so let me go ahead and build my basic setup for a turret. So I'll go into the uh, Constructibles tab, Turrets. And I'm just going to build a 360 degree turret, so this is something I can actually move up, down, left, right, and all over the place. So we'll pop that in. Now I'm going to put two wooden blocks. Um, let's say three wooden blocks, actually. Then I'm going to make a 3x2 bit of wood here. I guess I can... well, I already built it like this, so let me... I want to build it forward facing. Okay, so once that's done, I want to go on the back block, go back to missiles and torpedoes, and add a missile controller. In front of that, I want to add a middle missile six-way connector. And then I like to make a triple missile system. So I'll select the missile launch pads, and I'll build three of those. And then above it, I want to add a missile laser emitter. This would... actually, you can build a 40. You can build a 40, build it up. Either way, it kind of corrects itself one way or the other. It doesn't really matter too much for that. Now, this laser is used if you try and use a laser rider system which will follow the laser beam to its target and then blow up or do whatever it does depending on what you set the missile to do. Um, that can be a very effective way to have a missile system but I've had difficulty aiming it at times if your ship is not stable. So I'm going to be going with a simple infrared system. So once you have this the most basic way to get a system going would be to just add a bunch of missile blocks right here onto the front of this thing. Now I can add I can add the little few of them, or I can add a lot of them. Really, either way it depends. And you can see it's already kind of customizing it for me when I did that. Let me actually, whoops, didn't mean to do that. Let me actually pull it back a little bit here to get just some tiny little missiles right now. Okay, so it came up with its own little design here. So if I hit Q on each of these missiles, I can see their design and I can actually tweak them. 
Now, typically, these will start off with absolutely nothing, just simple like this. Now, you start off with the tail at the bottom, and the nose of the missile at the, at the, well, tail at the bottom. Tail at the top, nose at the bottom. Derp. Okay. So, we have a whole bunch of part options that we can put in here. We have the fins, which allow it to turn. The fuel tank, which, for obvious reasons, makes it go farther. Uh, the short-range thruster, which is just the thruster. I, hopefully, we'll eventually get a long-range thruster of some kind. But right now, that's the only thruster we really got. We have the explosive warhead, which would turn into an explos explosive missile. We also have a fragmentation warhead, which is my preference in missiles. Uh, target pres uh, position pre blah, prediction guidance. Blah, 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 blah. This uh, These are just both navigational tools for the device. I typically don't really need them all that often, so I tend not to use them. It helps the uh, computer's guidance system aim the missiles at uh, better targets. So if you're going to use a laser riding system, uh, it would probably be a good idea to have these. But for a simple infrared system which seeks uh, the uh, engines of an enemy vehicle, it's better just to, you know, ignore them for now. Augmented uh, proportional navigation device, or guidance I should say. Uh, uses the fins to accelerate the missile such as the target at a constant bearing. Helps you ensure an impact. Again, with an IR, it's typically not necessary, but if you're using the uh, laser rider, this would be a good thing to do it. So if you were setting up a laser rider system, you would want to go something like, uh, actually, no, that's, oops, that's not quite right. So short-range thruster, fins, a fuel tank. Let me see, I'd probably say two fuel tanks, explosive warhead, and then a laser rider, design, or a laser designated receiver. There we go. We'll aim the missile, whatever the missile block is pointed at. So that will follow the laser of our um, on top of our missile there. So that'd be a basic, just laser rider missile. We also have this receiver here. It's backward facing laser. will follow the beam of the laser missile block, useful for engaging fast air targets, as the laser does not have to be pointed at the target until the terminal stages. So this is a, this is very useful for tracking air targets. But again, I usually use infrared for that. We also have things like a proximity fuse, which you can attach to the, uh, well, actually pretty much anywhere in this vehicle, and you can set it up so that it will have a certain range, and it will detonate within that range. Really good, really useful for fragmentation rounds, which I use uh, quite often for that. The safety fuse will keep it from exploding on the vehicle it was launched from under any circumstances, so that can be quite useful. A one turn is something you would use if you were to set this just, you know, face up or sideways on your ship. That way it, you know, it doesn't just go straight up and then fall straight down. It'll go straight up, curve forward or curve in the direction it's pointing, and then it will engage the target. Likewise, I said for custom torpedoes, we have the torpedo propeller, which you would attach to the back instead of the uh, thruster. The torpedo sonar would act as the, well, its ability to find the target and strike them. So, good for hunting ships. We have a magnet for mines. So you can use that to deploy mines if you want to. We have ballast tanks for torpedoes and depth charges. Use them to, uh, well, of course, keep it from, decrease the floating height of the torpedo. Although, eh, you, pro you kind of want to keep it floating along the surface of the water a little bit, but, you know. Anyway, regulator for mines and depth charges allows the missile to survive for an extra 180 seconds. The base travel time is 60 seconds. The effect stack, useful for mine layers, so it will keep the uh, it'll keep it alive basically and able to detonate. Otherwise, 60 seconds after it's fired, the missile becomes inert. Of course, afterwards we have the fragmentation warhead here. Very useful, the one I use the most. You can set its uh, whoops, its uh, range and angle which it fires. Actually, that's the wrong one because let me actually replace that. You can set its cone of attack, so currently it's set at a 180 degree cone that it'll fire out. I usually like to lower that to about 40, give or take, roughly. And we also have, finally, the camera for infrared seekers. Helps the IR seekers select a useful target. Can be turned to uh, attack the center of mass, shields, or a particular random block. I have not actually used this too much. I imagine it would be quite fun, though. Let me, uh, let me actually go back, exit out of this for a second. And I'm going to add a couple more blocks to this. Okay, it seems like it's going to be causing problems here. There we go. Oh. Perhaps 
Perfect. Okay, so let me set up a, you know, a good, decent missile design. Actually, this thing's probably way even too huge. Ah, whatever. I'll be able to... Whoops, didn't even mean to build that there. I'll be able to make something ridiculous then, in that case. Whoops. Sorry, this is kind of very awkward. I should definitely mention to the dev that when you're in this menu, it shouldn't be messing with the camera. Okay, so I want short-range thrusters. I'll have two of those. Let's get two fins. Three fuel... Actually, let's go four fuel tanks. It'll be an incredibly long-range missile. Let's see... What do I want to add to that afterwards? Actually... Huh. Wow. I have so much to work with here. This is kind of crazy, actually. Usually I don't build missiles even remotely this large. As a matter of fact, let me remove a bit here. Let me remove one block off each of these. That'll significantly reduce the size of these monsters here. Ah, much better. Much, much, much better. So I'm going to go down and get a proximity fuse. Actually, I'll put the proximity fuse right there. And I'll lower it to a range of, let's say, let's say two. So it'll detonate about two meters away, give or take. And after that, I'll grab the fragmentation warheads. I'll put two of, grab two of those. Let me grab the camera for IR seeker. And then finally an infrared seeker, which would seek the engines of a target. Alright. Now, I can go into each fragmentation warhead and, of course, again, reduce the uh, cone angle of its attack. And once I have a design I like, I can go into save design. Set up a... Uh, well, this is actually the same thing as the other one there, long range IR. I'll just go... Missile 1 for now. Save. Now if I go back, go over to the next one, hit Q. I can go load. Select Missile 1 and load. And it automatically loads it right over to my next one here. Back, Q, and then just load. And there we go. Now there are... This is not everything as of yet. You can also add two other pieces to this on the right side here. We have the Identify Friend or Foe add-on. Attach a customized missile construct to stop heat-seeking missiles and sonar missiles targeting friendly units. Incredibly useful. Otherwise, if you do not have this, you will be attacking your own ships. Which is not nice. And beyond that, we have the staggered fire add-on. This will delay the add-on between each launch pad to a certain amount, up to 0.5 seconds is the max. Either 0.0, .0 second, well, that's just 0 second delay, or 5 second delay, or well... 0.5 second delay. So that these won't all launch at exactly the same time. I like to delay them to their maximum. I could actually probably add another one of these onto it somehow. In order to uh, further that. Let me actually add a block here. There we go. Missiles and torpedoes. I don't think I've actually ever tried to do this. I've usually just dealt with it as it is. It's not connected to the connector. Okay, so it has to connect to it. Either way, either way. Oh, yeah, because it has to be a six-way connector. Ah, yes. So if I pulled this back and added a six-way connector here, I could probably add on more delays if I so desired. I see. But anyway, let's uh, have fun with this thing. So yeah, as you can see, with this 360-degree turret, this thing just kind of floats everywhere now. So all you really have to do, let me aim it down a bit, is just aim and fire. Let's aim, like, straight up, though, so we can follow this. Now, another thing is, once you've launched a missile, you can hit caps lock and follow the missile. So let me fire these, and then hit caps lock, and we can kind of ride the missile to our target, if we so desire. This is also a good way to possibly steer them, although I haven't really tried that too much. So, oh wow, we really ran out of fuel very very quickly. There, so these missiles weren't really long range at all. So if I take off one thruster and add another fuel tank, then they would do a lot better. So let's tab back. So that is the custom missile system in pretty much its entirety. Now, I could set this up to, you know, work for torpedoes and everything else if I so desired. But that was good as is. So let's go ahead and remove all this now. Alright. Now, I'm not going to completely remove this because I will be using this momentarily. Now, the last of the main, well, I shouldn't say the last of the main weapons. There are uh, two more weapon systems we have to explore. There is the custom cannons, and then there's the custom lasers. Now, the custom cannons are the ones I use, other than drills now, the most. 
They are uh, pretty intricate little things. You can make some ridiculous beasts of a cannon uh, with this system. Let me actually go on here, select the firing piece. Now, each of the custom cannons, which you can select here, of course, starts off with a firing piece usually on a turret. You can set the firing piece on the ground if you wanted to, if you want to make a fixed weapon. But I always like to put it on a good turret base. As a matter of fact, let me remove this, and I'm going to add a, a precision turret base so it won't be flailing around nearly as much. So, constructibles, precision turret base. Alright, let's add two blocks, and then we'll get that firing block. So, custom cannons, firing piece. Now, after you place the firing piece, you can add on a whole bunch of barrels. You'll see the information about it right here if you want to see exactly what its accuracy is and everything like that. It's ammo use, it's recoil. Now, we have a whole bunch of different barrels. We have just a plain barrel. We have a recoil suppression barrel, which reduces the recoil, increases accuracy a bit. We have, well, actually it's more just reducing recoil so it doesn't like, just fly everywhere. We have the flash suppression barrel, which I don't really have it, find any use for at all. Just kind of reduces the visibility of the shot. Meh. Maybe if you were having a fun in multiplayer, that might be something useful to have, but meh. Anyway, beyond that, we have the motor-driven barrel, which increases the firing arc of the weapon. We have the elevation barrel, which is a new one, which increases, well, it uh, increases the arc of fire of the weapon in the vertical aspect, so it allows you to shoot higher into the air instead of more f farther forward. So that's really good for creating anti-air cannons. So typically what you would want to do is, you know, you can, you can add any of these barrels in any order that you want in front of it. So let's just say I'll add on four recoil suppression barrels, and then two motor-driven barrels to the end of it. Now, after that, I like to add a predictor up top, which shows gives you a line of fire for your cannon. And uh, after that's done, you want to get some six-way connectors. You can use either front and back connectors, up and down connectors, but I always just use six-way connectors. It just works better that way. Now, creating a simple gun system, all you really need at this point is to get yourself an autoloader which uh, helps to reload the weapon. Yeah, I can add one on each side here, kind of, you know, actually I'm going to hit N for a second here. Let's hit N so we got mirror mode on and we can actually get this built on both sides. So this will increase the reload time depending on how many of the ammo boxes are stored on it. And this will also give them ammo, give the weapon itself its own ammo storage. So typically you want to attach it to all three sides, which is the top, left, and bottom of this. It cannot be attached to the front or the back, only top, left, or bottom. And this is now a basic gun. I could just fire it as is if I wanted to. And it'll actually have some pretty, it'll have pretty rapid fire at this point, actually. Let's just kind of fire it. It's not too bad. But as you can see, it's quite basic. It's not really doing a lot of damage. Because it's most basic cannon. Now, if you do not click, if you stop building on this thing and you just hit build on the ground here, you will not be able to affect the turret. You'll be able to destroy part of it, but you won't be able to build on top of it. In order to build with this thing again, let me actually select something so I'm not going to be moving it. You look at the turret itself and then hit B, and then you can actually build on it again. Now, in order to make give this thing more damage, we're going to want to give it some gauge increasers, which can be connected to all the connectors here. And you can see it actually increases the size of the turret. So we'll attach those to all the uh, connectors here. Now, this thing will pack a lot more punch now, as you can see. Oh, God, it's huge. <laughs> oh, it's huge. Now, other than that, all you really have left to add at this point is one of two extra little devices. Well, there's also the interface screen, which is a block that allows you to interact with the firing piece without being able to see it. So if you have your firing piece kind of hidden in here like this, uh, you could add another... Let me actually go like this. You could do something like this and then pull this thing out and add on the interface screen in the back here so you can see okay it has a reload time of 2.29 seconds has kinetic damage of 580 now explosive damage you know I think I'm gonna mention that to the dev as well cause when you're looking at this it'd be good if it was if this whole screen here was covered in black and had some kind of like interface screen to it as if you were reading it on a monitor kind of thing so you can see it better and then if you just move over one you won't have to have that anymore uh, has a hundred and well, one thousand two hundred ammo in six boxes. It can reach shows its elevation, its recoil, its ammo use, its inaccuracy, and so on and so forth. But other than that, there are two devices which we can add to make this thing more more bang. There's the explosive warheads, 
and the armor piercing warheads. Each one of these that you add, and I must say they are expensive, especially the explosive one, uh, will give you one round for every five seconds. So you can increase this to both increase the damage bonus, the armor piercing, and the rate of fire, the attach rate, and just, you know, general, you know, destructionist. So let's add a whole bunch of explosive and armor piercing. Okay, now let's take a look at this baby, shall we? So the red one is explosive, and the purple one is armor piercing, right there. Now, if I were to add, whoops. If I were to add more ammo boxes to this thing, or more ammo boxes, more auto loaders, and then ammo boxes, I would increase the rate of fire of this thing. So let me kind of toss those up top here, and see how fast it fires now if I hold down the button. You can see it's much, much more rapid. It's just t absolutely tearing through this wall here. But you can see the inaccuracy modifier is definitely being an issue here. It's kind of just flying everywhere. So let's go ahead and add on more recoil suppression barrels. And a couple more motor driven barrels. Now, obviously you won't be able to tell how accurate it is from that, but hey. You can see it's a little bit more accurate now. I've increased the length of the barrel a bit, but hey. Let's just tear this apart here. This thing is just absolutely ripping into this defensive wall. Just can't even stop it at all. So that is the uh, basics of the custom cannon. You can do a whole bunch of ridiculous things with this. I mean, this isn't even remotely the end of what you can do with this. Let me actually kind of show you something a little bit more advanced along these lines whether you, that you can build. I think I have the custom version of this thing. Let me push this off here. So, hopefully this will not sink the ship as this is kind of huge. Actually, you know what? Let me let me extend this a little bit here. Cuz I don't want to sink this. I don't want to sink this boat. I'm kind of using it right now. Whoops. That was funny. Whoops. I am really messing this up right now. You know, let me add a central block here so that I can get this building on both sides. There we go. That'll give us the stability that we need. Ah, screw it. It's alright. I'm not making anything pretty here. I'm just making it function. Okay, so the kind of things that you can eventually build if you want to... Uh, can be something as crazy as this. Now, I should mention, if you build a cannon you really want to use and you want to... You know, move it on, or er, move it on. Blarg. I can't speak apparently today. And you want to uh, create multiple of the exact same one. While you're building it, as if I had the turret still there, you can go into sub-objects and select an empty tile. And save that turret as a sub-object. Such as, let me see, I have my basic cannon here. So I can select it, I can select it to which turret I want it to be on. And then just pop it over here and we have a basic cannon. Ready to go, but I could add on more of these if I want to just pop, 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 and it'll keep sucking out whatever resources I uh, used for it. But we're not here for the basic cannons. Oh no, we're here for my stripped massive turret. It's on a 180 degree turret. So let me build this guy off to the side a bit here, I guess. Okay, it's going to knock me loose, but that's okay. So, this is the kind of turret you can make at some point. So you can see this one actually has three barrels. Now, these get complicated when you make more than one barrel, as you have to make sure that each turret, let me kind of show a basic example here, is on its own, let me go custom cannons or constructibles, turret, turret, two blocks, whoops, <laughs> whoops. All right. Here we go. Anyway, sorry, I'm getting terribly, terribly distracted here. So each firing piece needs to be on or connected to its own parts. So you don't mix parts with these. I would add on, say, a predictor in the center here. Get the six-way connectors for each of these. And then you could just add on whatever you'd want to it, a bunch of gauge connectors and such. And you can see that it kind of builds evenly. But if you try and put it in the center here, 
only one will get the benefit of it typically. It'll load in and they'll start being, you know, mismatched. So one turret will be larger than the other. It only really seems to do it when you load in. But generally you have to keep each part separate like this. Now you can put certain things in between them, I'm sure, such as explosive rounds if you want to, explosive warheads. But you want to keep them separate, at least with the gauge increasers in mind. And with that, you would create something along the lines of this beast right here. Let me actually go in and select this. Now this thing is ridiculous, as you can imagine. This will absolutely decimate this targeting range. So this is just the ridiculousness of some of these cannons can get to. It uses lead blocks and iron, well, wood, or what the hell, iron blocks. Uh, metal blocks in order to kind of give it a bit of stability. This the whole thing used to be covered with this, but I had to strip it down for cost, basically, because just all of the uh, all of the explosive rounds on here are just cost an absolute fortune. So I tend to want to replace them with uh, replace them all with uh, armor piercing rounds if I can. But I left a couple on just because. Now you can actually, if I go build, oh, not build, or V, I mean. If I go, here we go, I can the back here, you can see that each one of these has a damage, a kinetic damage of 937, uh, explosive damage of 163, and armor piercing value of 7.5. All the ammo, the recoil, and the accuracy modifier is a lot less severe on this, and all of its ammo use and everything else. So, that is that basic beastie. So, let's get rid of these. Let's get rid of these, shall we? I may have to actually load in a new target range now that I've absolutely decimated that one. So that is custom cannons in pretty much their entirety. I really gotta set less alarms now. <laughs> now, we move on to our final item of the day. If I could shove this beast off this rig. I guess it's, well, you know what, yeah, let's spawn in another rig, just because I don't want to have to worry about that thing weighing us down. So we load another weapons testing platform. Although it's going to land on our other, oh, you know what, here, let's restart the designer, it'd be simpler that way. Because <laughs> I, you know, want to load this thing and actually keep it not flailing on the other target. Alrighty then. Let's load the weapons testing platform and begin the test of my least understood weapon systems. Every other weapon system, you know, I've I've got down for the most part except for this one. The multi-purpose laser systems, which is in the custom cannon under multi-purpose laser. Now, you can unlock this one right here and you'll find certain certain bits in the construction selector here that will be read it out. These are special items that you need to beat campaign missions or what is it? Is it campaign missions? Yeah, campaign missions to unlock such as laser missile defense which would be quite useful for that. But anyway, this is a very very confusing system so the best way to explain it is by going to prefabs and then checking out the devs version of these weapons. So we have the extremely low grade basic laser now, lasers use energy rather than ammunition, as we saw from the previous one. And then, whoops, E. I want to get the uh, higher grade with a transceiver connector. Let me actually pull that back a bit. And then build that. Alright, so, the basics of the laser system are the... Oops. Let me actually hit B on this thing. Blocks, wooden block, wooden block. Here we go. Let's go forward here. Are the multi-purpose multi laser block, which works kind of like the six-way connector of the uh, previous weapon. We have the actual cavity here. But that's cavity. Let me go to custom laser combiner. Ah, that's the laser combiner. So this is where... This is kind of like the firing piece of the previous weapon. And then in front of that, we have different kinds of optics. We have the laser optics, which will increase the range. And then we have the steering optics, which will increase the ray, the uh, area that you can fire. Let me actually kind of hop on top here and show you what I mean. 
So the laser for this one, you just kind of hold it down, and you can see it'll kind of burst fire at the moment because it has a uh, specific thing attached to it for that. So I wouldn't be able to aim this far left if it wasn't for that bit of it, the front of it there. Whoops. Let me add on some more sighting optics to the end here. So the wider this is, the uh, better area you have to aim. So now I can aim a lot higher if I wanted to, although it won't increase distance. Now, the on well, uh, sorry, apparently I can't speak anyway anymore. So the part that creates the laser will eventually attach to this coupler here. So the coupler helps transmit the beam to the actual device. On the side of the coupler, you can attach the uh, laser Q switches, which give it the uh, kind of burst fire it's doing right now. If I remove them, it would have just a constant rate of fire. As you can see right there, it's just a constant little laser beam. But it's best, it seems, to add the laser Q switch, because that seems to give it, you know, more punch, as it were. To charge up the power and then just release it into your enemies. Now, behind that, you want to build the laser cavities, which you attach the laser pumps to. These are what creates the laser itself. And then, but, and attached to the far back of them, we have the uh, frequency doublers, which increase the... Uh, let me actually go build here again. Frequency doublers, frequency doublers. There we go. Frequency doublers can be placed anywhere in a line of the laser cavity. Increase the frequency of the laser. As such, increases the armor-piercing value. And then finally we have the uh, destabilizer, which I think is on the end here, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, the laser destabilizer. And that guy will dramatically increase the energy which is used in firing, increasing the damage. Now, we have a much more advanced system set up right here. As you can see, it's the same basic kind of thing. It has the uh, a few more uh, la ooh, laser pump. A few more laser Q switches hooked up to this thing, to the central laser cavity. I'm actually hit build on this. Not the cavity, I should say. Laser coupler. Yes, laser coupler. So it's all attached to the laser coupler. On the back, of course, we just have more of the uh, frequency doublers and destabilizers. The interesting bit about this one is that it uses this in a separate kind of way. And I should mention the dev also has a much better setup for this kind of a laser system on his own uh, tutorial video. So that will be linked down in the description below. Feel free to check that out. Now this is kind of connected up. I don't know why he connected the multipurpose laser block to, the, to here and then the glass. That seems kind of odd to me, but, you know, whatever. It's just probably for looks or something, just to give it something to balance itself up on. Now, this guy right here, this uh, transmitter and receiver, is used to transmit the laser from the uh, device that creates it up to the actual shooting area. So, let me see if I can find that. Laser transceiver. Here we go. To link multiple lasers to a distant laser coupler. So, if I wanted to, I could link it up like so to another one that was set up all along here if I want to. So, you could set this up multiple multiple of these side by side to link to the same firing piece, essentially. Now, this guy is a little more advanced. You could also add this on a turret using this. He has actually shown that you can send it to the bottom of, a, of the uh, weapon turret. And it will actually yeah, send it to the laser itself. So, really, really cool how he did how he did that. But I, you know, wouldn't be able to create something that crazy. As you can see, having this many laser Q switches has increased the firing rate of this thing ridiculously. So it's just an absolute beam of death now. I would definitely increase the power more. And it requires massive engines to run this kind of system. But that is essentially how one would set up a uh, laser system. So this is the, probably the more complex out of the system so far. So, it's, you know, it takes a lot of getting used to. I still haven't gotten used to this damn thing. But that is all of the basics for weapon design and all just the general weapons in in their entirety. But yes, I gotta fire some more of this laser beam. Woo! Lasers! Okay, that's enough of that. I've had enough of that. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope you all enjoyed this uh, much more improved 
tutorial for uh, the weapon systems of the game. Now that I had a bit more of a general idea of exactly how the hell these lasers worked and the drills, which became my favorite since I did the previous tutorial. So this is a uh, much more concise look at pretty much how to design all of these kinds of systems. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Definitely check out the game, and I will see you guys another time with some more From the Depths. Silver out.